Jim Cunningham with you from Classical QED 893. Winter, spring, summer, fall. It's a joy to have Nicholas McGee in a right nice to, hall. Great Welcome to be back. here. Not quite sure which season it actually is oh right now. Oh, my. Well, we've got the four seasons from Vivaldi, some Haydn, some Mozart. Great program. Thanks for coming. It's a great pleasure. I haven't been here this century. Well, it's time at last. This piece, Vivaldi's Four Seasons, it's a favorite of everyone. But we can never assume that everyone knows it. Tell us some of the special pleasure. You've done it so many times. I've recorded it twice, indeed. No, I absolutely love it. I think the thing that people forget about it is just how original it is. The violin concerto was probably less than a quarter of a century old, less than 20 years old when it was written. It's a very new format just to have a violin concerto. And then you have a programmatic violin concerto. It's not the concerto in E major, it's the concerto in E major about spring, and it's describing music. Now... One of the things that's great fun for a composer, of course, is to be able to describe things. And the seasons of Vivaldi and seasons of other people, like Haydn's seasons, are great when they can do all the things in each particular season. In spring, you have birdsong. In Italy, thunderstorms. Uh, You have dancing, because it's been cold and miserable all winter. It's nice to be outside dancing in the summer you get cuckoos you have more dancing you have more thunderstorms um you have bugs and more thunderstorms and then in autumn of course it's the harvest and in italy this means the grape harvest and it means drinking too much the slow moment is a hangover and the last moment is hunting not with dogs the English style but with guns and then we have the last moment of winter people getting very cold stamping their feet uh, shivering feeling how nice it is to be inside and then ice skating mm-hmm. so all sorts of things which Rivaldi then manages to put into music which people could recognize and just in case they didn't he wrote poems in Italian that go up on top of each piece Vivaldi wrote the little sonnets little sonnets that go on top which are not perhaps the greatest poetry since Dante but that they are very explicable they're good at explaining what happens and they're just I tell you they're a joy to listen to and but the great fun thing is I don't play them I, I, I play the harpsichord part so I get to make I get to jam to play jazz with a violinist with this stuff and you can put all sorts of extra stuff in it's not so written in stone like a lot of music so you can have a bit of a little bit improv and i get to improvise in the in in the hangover section where vivaldi just says play eighth notes in the harpsichord doesn't tell you what to do so i will do something different every night haydn and mozart too at this concert absolutely what have you brought us we've got an unusual piece of mozart the uh, chicane from idomeneo uh, Idomeneo is an opera, the first really enormous, serious opera that he wrote. We know Mozart mostly for the comedies, but he wrote a number of what are called opera seria, uh, not exactly tragedies, because they would end happily. And this one, Idomeneo, was written, oh, he was 25 or something. And um, it's just before he went to Vienna. He wrote it for Munich. And he's showing off like mad, uh, showing I'm the greatest thing ever. And so one of the things he did was he wrote his own ballet music. Normally in an opera, the composer would write the opera and the ballet music would either be written by somebody else or they'd simply use music from another piece that the dancers already knew. But Mozart wrote it all himself, again, showing off a little bit. And this is the Chicane, and it's a 12-minute virtuoso piece for orchestra. I love... Haydn's music so much. How did you settle on this one? Uh, I think it's a question always with Haydn with an or- it's always a question with the orchestra of which one haven't you done recently? Uh, with, and I'm sad to say with a lot of modern symphony orchestras it's like well we haven't played any Haydn for a very long time. Um, they have Mozart festivals, very few people have Haydn festivals um, and so even with the famous symphonies and the drum roll is a pretty famous one, you'll find it hasn't been played in 10 years, 15 years. I don't know about this one, but I think one of, one of the reasons this one was chosen is that it had in fact not been played recently. Mm-hmm. 